Hi, my name is Ariel Bishop, and I'll be presenting on Yen Suzhen. So, Yen Suzhen was born in Beijing, China in 1963, and she got her BA in oil painting from Capital Normal University in Beijing in 1989. And she draws a lot of her inspiration from Beijing, and specifically from the rapidly changing environment that she finds there. And so often what her works are focusing on is the tension between development and the individual. And specifically, her works are going to commemorate those left behind as the world rapidly develops and urbanizes. And so she wants to commemorate both her memories and cultural memories. Um, and so major themes within her work are going to be past and present, globalization and homogenization and specifically how she preserves memories within those environments. And often she does so using found objects, which are literally things she finds like on the street or in dumpsters. Um, and she collages them together often and rearranges them. And so she's kind of weaving together this both very personal and individual story with a very communal and kind of cultural story. And one way that she weaves together this personal and communal is by creating her works, not only with her immediate family, but also with the audience. And often this can be in the form of performances. And so the first piece I wanna talk about is Ruined City, which she established in or she installed at Capital Normal University Art Museum in 1995. And so at that time, China really was not very positive for art and was something that was really done more in back alleys um, or in secret meetings. And so Capital Normal Museum was one of the only places that would really allow her to have an installation like this. And this is really kind of her first big moment on the art scene. And so a lot of the reason why art wasn't very commonly accepted is because there was this drive to modernize Beijing. And it was this drive that was driving out the people that had been in Beijing for a long time. Um, and as they were knocking down old buildings to make way for new buildings, they were kind of pushing the prior inhabitants to the periphery. And in doing so, they were destroying the memories, the culture, and the history of the people that had been there for centuries and pushing them to the periphery of Chinese society. And so what you're seeing is literally pieces that she found on the streets of Beijing, and she literally kind of dumped cement powder on them. Um, and so the bed frame, dressing table, and wardrobes um, literally were taken from actual demolished homes, or she borrowed it from family friends, and she took the cement powder from a construction site. And she is kind of talking about how these memories that she finds stored within these pieces are being covered by this idea of modernization and construction. And so it's quite interesting because the cement powder, um, she literally gave it back. The installation was only up for a few days. And so who knows where the cement powder went. Um, and I think it's really interesting that she's using this very temporary piece to talk about what Beijing once was and specifically, she's kind of mourning the loss of this individual and collective memory as it is covered by this rapid modernization of China. And so the next piece I want to talk about is Portable City. And specifically, this is the Hangzhou piece, um, but it's a series which she began creating in 2001. Uh, this one was made in 2011. And so the series is literally textiles that she found on the streets of these cities that she visited. And what she did was she took like old clothing from dumpsters or clothing that she would find on people of those cities. And she created these miniature cities and their skylines out of this old clothing. 
And so what she's really emphasizing here is this idea of latent memory that the clothing is holding. And it's this idea that the individual person who might have once owned this clothing is representing the collective memory of the city as a whole. And so she's expressing this whole culture within this one piece of clothing or these few pieces of clothing. And so the suitcases as a whole that they're being held in are kind of expressing this joy of travel because she's been to every single one of the cities that is constructed here. And so she's really celebrating this idea that she gets to go and travel and see these places. Um, and behind it, she has this pin map, which further expresses this joy that she has of being able to travel widely because her mother, for instance, didn't have this opportunity and she does. And so the last um, kind of major piece I wanna talk about is Sky Patch. And so Sky Patch is actually more of an immersive experience than a singular sculpture. And all of the sculptures within Sky Patch are part of this larger experience um, and kind of this commentary about the idea of involving the past and the individual audience and kind of this idea of the world being turned upside down. And so Sky Patch is still um, being displayed today. Um, and it's really interesting. So the museum in which Sky Patch is uh, installed at right now, uh, the opening to it is this Welcome to the Spinning Factory permanent display. And so what she did was she integrated the elements of this um, display, which is kind of about Hong Kong's textile industrial history. And she made it part of her experience as a whole. And so after you leave the permanent display, you get into what is literally like an airport terminal. And then you reach this baggage carousel. And within this baggage carousel, you really, I think this is cool, you get to stitch fragments, fragments of secondhand clothes onto brightly colored suitcases. And you literally get to add them to the hanging suitcases. And so what you're seeing right now are some of these suitcases being hung upside down. And what's really neat is this is called in transit. And it's this idea that the world has been turned upside down. And so it's underneath this is where you are, is where people are sewing. And her ultimate goal is to have so many people like work on this that <laughs> it covers the entire ceiling. And so it's this idea that we are able to collaborate in this upside down world and specifically within this era of COVID. Um, and it's kind of her response to COVID, which was happening as she was trying to bring this piece together. Um, and specifically this idea that we can work together in a period of separation <laughs> as the world is upside down. And so this is another part of Sky Patch. Um, and again, it's just this idea of old school textile industry. And at this point, she's really talking about her familial relationships. And so her mother was a textile factory worker and it actually created a bit of family estrangement in this uh, struggle for intergenerational communication. And so she's talking about not only her mother's history as a textile worker, but specifically how China as a whole was impacted by this textile industry. And so on top of these iconic works, um, she actually has some photography and other media. And it's kind of this idea that you get to participate in the coming of new history and you get to co-create kind of this incredible display of and so what Sky Patch as a whole is about is this idea of bringing it back together in the face of destruction. And so the name Sky Patch um, is a specifically a hallmark to the Chinese myth of the mother goddess Nuwa, 
who sewed the sky together again after episodes of epic devastation. And so it's this idea that we can sew it all back together um, after epic destruction and failure. And it's the idea specifically, what she's talking about is this idea that it is the individual building a community um, to kind of face the destruction that she perceives.